There are a lot of really great things about the Android P beta, and Facundo covered his top five, which you can check out up here. But there are some things that aren't so great. Here are five of Android P's worst changes, and how to fix some of them. Number one is the option to clear all and the app overview screen. In Android Oreo, you could go to the top of your app overview screen and see the clear all option. In Android P, the option is gone. This is really hard for someone like me who likes to keep things nice and tidy. The Android team stated that they removed it because the operating system is able to handle its own memory management. They thought that there's no need for you to have the ability to clear it. But good news, they're adding it back. Both the Android team and their lead, Dave Burke, confirmed this. Dave tweeted about this recently. You can actually watch them talk about this at a Q&A session at the Google I.O. conference by clicking the card up here. Yeah, sorry about that. We'll, we're looking at bringing it back. Uh, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Number two, the system UI tuner is gone. Well, kind of. If you're not familiar with what the system UI tuner is, it allows you to toggle on and off certain features in your notification bar. Maybe you don't want to see whether or not your do not disturb is on, or maybe you want to see the seconds on your clock. System UI tuner allows you to do that. Before, you used to be able to access that by holding down the gear icon in the notification shade, but now that's gone. But there is a way to access the UI tuner again, and it's by downloading Nova Launcher. You can find a link for that down below in the description. Simply create a widget from the home screen, choose the Nova Launcher Activities widget, and go to the System UI Tuner option, and then choose the last one, System UI Demo Mode. Once you add it, it'll let you know that it's fun for some, but not for everyone. It's okay, this won't void your warranty. You can then quick toggle through settings and see how it changes the icons that show up. And if you want, you can add seconds to your clock as well. We actually have an article for this on our Android Police website, so you can check that out in the description below. Number three is the removal of the expandable quick settings in the notification menu. In Android P, they removed the drop-down menus from the quick toggle settings in the drop-down. Before, there was the ability to hit the icon to turn off and on a setting, and in addition, in addition to that, you were able to hit the down carrot to go into a detailed menu for things like the Bluetooth speaker you want to use or Wi-Fi network. Now on Android P, you can toggle on and off as usual, but accessing the detailed menu will require a long press. Number four, aesthetic changes. Now, this is a bit subjective, and many of you have spoken up about it, and I agree with most of it. There's more white everywhere, which means the OLED panels that are so common in Android phones now will not utilize as much of its power-saving benefits. It's also super blinding at night unless you have a dark wallpaper to activate the dark mode. We still don't have the ability to manually toggle that on and off. Some people are not a fan of the round icons everywhere, specifically in the quick settings menu. It feels a bit bubbly. And then there's the colored icons and settings that make it look cartoony, and honestly, a bit like Samsung's TouchWiz. And surprisingly enough, this has somewhat grown on me. Number five is the removal of the per app battery usage data. Before Android P, you would be able to log into your battery settings and see which app was taking up the most battery. In addition to that, you'd be able to see how many minutes it was using and how much battery it used. In Android P, it's not available in the same spot. There is a way to solve it, but your mileage may vary. To see if it works for you, you would have to go into the developer options, and you can do that by going into settings, system, advanced, about phone, advanced, then click on the build number until you're made a developer. Go back one page, and under the system settings, you'll see developer options. This is where your mileage may vary. If it worked for you, you can click on see Android 8.0 battery settings. You can also go to the feature flags option in the developer options menu and check toggle on settings battery display app list. Then you should be able to see the original app list and battery usage in the battery menu, but your mileage may vary. You can also go into the battery settings, click the settings menu, click advanced battery usage, and you'll be able to see the app usage there. It's a little bit more cumbersome to reach that, but the data is still there. And if you want to read the article and see what it looks like when this does work, we have an article for that down below in the description. And I know I said top five, but there's a bonus one, and it's because there's so much division over it. It's gestures. Some people love it, or some people like David on our Android Police team write a whole article about how bad it is. For me, I'm kind of so-so on it. There's some really great things about it, but one of my least favorite is the double swipe to get to the app drawer. If you're on the home screen, you can long swipe up to get to the app drawer, but if you're in an app, you have to swipe up two times to access it. You cannot do a long swipe up from the app to get there. This inconsistency is really odd and frustrating. They've created extra steps to do things that you normally would do, and it's not intuitive. There's an odd design weighting to things. Since gestures are here, the square recents button is gone, but the back triangle remains. Now the navigation options at the bottom seem to be unevenly weighted. The little app slider option is really great, 
unless you use the phone with your left hand, it's really uncomfortable and a bit of a stretch to reach the other side. I often feel like I'm about to drop my phone when I do this, and for me, personally, I can't reach the sides well enough to get the fast scrolling to work just right. If this was centered just like the iPhone 10, this would work way better. Oh, and I have a little tip for those of you who don't know already. The quick app switch is still there. While you double tap the recent square option in previous versions, in Android P, you just quick swipe right and it'll quick switch to your last app. Do you agree with this list? Give us a thumbs up and leave some comments down below. What are some things that you don't like about Android P? We have plenty of articles that are continually being updated on Android P on our Android Police website. Check out the links down below in the description. If you haven't already subscribed to the Android Police channel, go ahead and do that. And if you'd like to check out my channel, you can click on the image of me as well. Thanks for watching Android Police. Until next time.